Outside Pripyat, nature's reclaiming is even more advanced. Though a recent study showed that radiation had slowed the growth of some trees and found fewer insect species in the area than expected, the exclusion zone is very much a wilderness. Almost all the houses here are abandoned. Almost. Of 1,200 so-called self-settlers who returned to their land shortly after the evacuation and refused to budge, some 200 are left. The radiation wasn't spread evenly across the area, and Maria Ilchenko is convinced her land was spared. I've been living here since 1987. I've been here the whole time. If there were radiation here, I'd be dead. And I'm not dead. No one here has died from radiation. They died of old age. Some lived to be 80, 83 even. Twelve women and five men are left in Maria's village, Kupovatoya. The population before 1986 was 340. Maria lives with her husband, Ivan. Oh, hello. You filming? Oh, Yuri brought them. The self-settlers' only connection to the outside world is through occasional visits from family or from guides to the exclusion zones, such as Yuri. I like to live in the place where I'm from, and this is where I live. But it's true, the transport connections aren't what they used to be. Bar a few essentials that get delivered, most of what Ivan and Maria eat comes from their own land. They once dreamed the zone would eventually open again but now they feel safer in isolation. If it were open, bandits would come here and attack us. Why? Just like in Kiev, they mug people and kill them. Ivan does not see radiation, on the other hand, as any threat at all. He was once given a Geiger counter. It has been gathering dust for years. It's just a piece of rubbish. Yeah, now it works. I was still measuring radioactivity and uh, seems to be accurate. 0.12 microsieverts per hour is lower than the ambient radiation levels in most cities. 